A cordial greeting. Today is Wednesday, June 26, 2024. This is meteorologist Ruben Garcia. In this video, I would like to talk about a strong tropical wave currently located just south of the island of Jamaica. This disturbance has been designated as Invest 94 because it has the potential for cyclonic development as it moves west-northwest and will be affecting regions such as Belize, the Yucatan Peninsula, and the states of Campeche, Veracruz, and Tamaulipas. Additionally, this tropical wave will be interacting with a Central American gyre that is currently over Central America. This will result in a rainfall event affecting much of Central America. Therefore, in this video, I will analyze the chances of cyclonic development before it reaches Belize or the Yucatan Peninsula, as well as the development possibilities in the southern Gulf of Mexico. We will also discuss the projected accumulated rainfall anticipated for Costa Rica, Panama, Nicaragua, Honduras, El Salvador, Guatemala, Belize, and southern Mexico. Furthermore, this disturbance has caused significant rainfall over Jamaica and parts of eastern Cuba. While we are monitoring the evolution of Invest 94, we are also keeping a close eye on the newly designated Invest 95, which has a medium probability of cyclonic development as it moves west and could pose a threat to the Lesser Antilles early next week. It is important for the rest of the Caribbean to stay very alert to its evolution over the coming days. If you want to know more details about this forecast, I invite you to watch a video I recently recorded on my YouTube channel. Now, let's get back to discussing Invest 94. As you can see in this image from specialized trajectory models, it is generally expected to move west-northwest, passing near or over Honduras, Belize, the Yucatan Peninsula, and southern Mexico. However, there is still uncertainty about whether it will take a path over land or move further north and remain over water for longer. This will be crucial for development opportunities, because if it stays on a more northerly path, it could potentially become a tropical depression before reaching Quintana Roo or Belize. Regardless of whether it becomes a tropical cyclone, depending on how strong it reaches the waters of the Gulf of Mexico, it could undergo a reorganization process and possibly become a tropical depression upon reaching Veracruz or Tamaulipas. The difficulty of this forecast lies precisely in the interaction it will have with land areas, especially the northern coast of Honduras. Nonetheless, the intensity models keep it quite weak, and currently, they do not predict a tropical depression before it reaches Belize or the Yucatan Peninsula. For this reason, the National Hurricane Center maintains only a 20% probability of development over the next seven days. However, it is important for residents of Quintana Roo, Campeche, Yucatan, Veracruz, and Tamaulipas to stay alert to its evolution in case it organizes faster than we are anticipating. As you will see shortly, some wind gusts and heavy rains are expected to affect the region, indirectly causing rainfall over much of Central America with the potential to generate new floods. Let's now look at the projections from the global models. But before that, I want to invite you to subscribe to my YouTube channel so you don't miss any of the videos I'll be recording. Go to the bottom of the video. Click the red subscribe button, and then click the bell to receive notifications of new videos. Let's begin by looking at the projection from the American model, the GFS. You can see that during the night hours of Friday, it has the low pressure just north of Honduras and east of Belize, and strengthens it considerably in this area on Friday with the possibility of it becoming a tropical depression. Although the chances are quite low at the moment, we cannot rule out that it may achieve this before reaching land. Eventually, the model projects this low pressure to be over the Bay of Campeche, where it could reorganize a bit before reaching Veracruz during the night hours of Sunday. We also have the projection from the European model showing something very similar. A well-defined low pressure with perhaps a small chance of becoming a tropical depression just east of Belize during the night hours of Friday. Eventually, the low pressure moves towards the Gulf of Mexico and maintains a trajectory towards southern Tamaulipas or northern Veracruz during the afternoon hours of Sunday. At least in these runs, the European model does not develop a tropical depression but does keep the low pressure quite strong. The other models agree with these projections. For example, the German model also shows a low pressure east of the Yucatan Peninsula and Belize during the afternoon hours of Friday, eventually moving towards the southern Gulf of Mexico to move over Tamaulipas or Veracruz between Sunday and Monday. The UK model also agrees with this projection. So, we do see quite a bit of consensus among the majority of models. Even though they strengthen the low pressure on Friday north of Honduras and east of Belize, it seems that the time over water will not be sufficient for it to become a tropical depression before reaching the Yucatan Peninsula or Belize. Regardless of its development, some heavy rain and wind gusts are expected to affect the region over the weekend. We can observe the different scenarios in the ensemble members of the GFS model. Very few of them develop a tropical depression due to land interaction, while some members of the European model, especially those with a more northerly trajectory, do develop a tropical depression or storm over the weekend. However, this is only 10 to 15 percent of the members, making this scenario the least likely at the moment. Let's then look at the expected impacts across the region of Central America and Southern Mexico. 
Starting with wind gusts, you can see that some winds between 60 to 70 km per hour can affect the eastern coast of the Yucatan Peninsula, northern Belize, and eventually coastal areas of Veracruz and Tamaulipas. This is regardless of whether it becomes a tropical depression or tropical storm. Specifically, you can see that during Friday afternoon, it is expected to be quite windy, particularly along the coast of the Yucatan and Quintana Roo states, with some wind gusts reaching 60 to 70 km per hour. Similarly, for Tamaulipas and Veracruz, during Sunday morning, some wind gusts between 60 to 70 km per hour can be recorded depending on where this low-pressure system enters. In addition to the wind, a significant rainfall event is also expected for parts of Central America and Southern Mexico. Related to the influence of Invest 94 as well as the development of a Central American gyre, which will bring humid flow from the Pacific, increasing the likelihood of rain across the region. In the GFS model's projection, you can clearly see between Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, how showers will be generated across Central America, and eventually for parts of Southern and Central Mexico. In terms of accumulated rainfall expected over the next five days associated with the Central American gyre, some areas of southern Honduras, eastern El Salvador, western Nicaragua, southern Costa Rica, and western Panama are expected to see rainfall accumulations between 150 to 250 millimeters over the next five days. Additionally, in orange and yellow, rainfall accumulations between 100 to 150 millimeters are expected, including much of Guatemala, Belize, and the states of Tabasco, Chiapas, Veracruz, Campeche, and Quintana Roo. Although this rain event will not be as extreme as what we saw last week, the soil is saturated in many of these areas, which could lead to new flooding with the additional rain expected. Therefore, great caution is advised for our followers in southern Mexico and Central America. Well, with that, I say goodbye. I will continue to closely monitor the evolution of Invest 94 and notify you of any significant changes in this forecast. Goodbye.